Hello YouTubers, Cold for Sound Five here, and this is take two of my book vlog episode five. No manga today. I don't care about that right now. A series that I have longed for eagerly. Thirty nine clues. A magnificent series. Book one, Maze of Bones. Started it back in 2008. I think it was 9 actually. I read it. I loved it. I can say that for some series, but it was such good storytelling. I finished it and I bought, bought the first one. Not the second one. I only bought, rented the first one from the library. Read it. Story still got me. Just how everything was done. Book three kept going. Book four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Masterpieces. I can't say that for some series. I like some series. It's just that this series got me. I just like how everything was so intense. How the kids were on the verge of death a couple times. Ah, from Scholastics. From. The Maze of Bones, One False Note, The Sword Thief, Beyond the Grave, The Black Circle, Into Deep, The Viper's Nest, The Emperor's Cold, Storm Warning 2, Into the Gauntlet. It's amazing. I can't say this for some series. I should come into a great on these book vlogs more calm, more enticed. Than my last few. I will continue with the JoJo's Bizarre Adventure one. I plan to do it every after every two volumes. I have one. I'll just wait till next month. There'll be six months between them. You can wait, can't you? This series was amazing. I could not put it down at the time. Have to reread it every time. Both times I have tried to reread it, I finished volume one, never to do the next one. Because at the time, <coughs> I just get manga I want to read first. I have to reread this. One million dollars or a clue? What? What happened if you discovered that your family was one of the most powerful in the human history? What if you were told that the source of the family's power was hidden around the world in the form of 39 clues? What if you were given a choice, take a million dollars and walk away, or get the first clue? If you are Amy and Dan Cahill, take the clue and begin a very dangerous race. This series, just talk about it. So I was going to try to get it there. I'm just trying to clear up my throat. Yeah. The race is on to find the 39 clues that safeguard a great and power, our great and great power. 14 year old Dan and her younger brother, uh, 14 year old Amy Gale and her younger brother Dan are shocked to find themselves in the lead. The search seems to be taking them to Venya, and they hold a coded piece of Mozart's sheet of music that a key to find the next clue, a tale by a pack of power-hungry relatives, and Amy and Dan can't see if they are sailing towards victory or straying to a dangerous trap. Book 2, One Falls Note. There is only one rule in the 39 clues. Find 
to find the 39 clues around the world. Trust no one. But when the hunt leads 14-year-old Amy to hell and her younger brother Dan to Japan, they only chance, their only chance to find the third clue seems to lie in their unreliable uncle, Alistair O. Will they be foolish enough to make an alliance with a, with a clue on the line? Amy and Dan might not have a choice, but in the family to hell, in the Cahill family, trusting your relatives could get you killed. In Book 3, The Sword Thief. Measures from the dead, betrayed by their cousins, abandoned by their uncle, and with the slimmest hint to, to guide them, 14-year-old Amy Cahill and her younger brother Dan rush off to Egypt. Oh, that's how you spell it. On the, the hunt for the three night clues that lead to a source of uh, an imaginable power. But when they arrive, Amy and Dan get something completely unexpected. A message from their dead grandmother, Grace. Grace set up to help the two orphans, or are Amy and Dan heading into the most devastating betrayal of all. In Beyond the Grave, Book 4. A Game of Cat and Mouse, a strange telegram lures 14 year old, year old Amy Cahill and her younger brother Dan deep into Russia and away from the only trustworthy adult they know. Signed with the initials NRR, Telegram launches a race to uncover a treasure stolen by the Nazis. The truth behind the murder of the last Russian royal family. All too soon, the treasure hunt starts to smell like a Lucian trap. The bait might be just irresistible. What will Amy and Dan rest find out? really happened to the night their parents died. Book 2, 5, The Black Circle. Trust no one. Amy, 14-year-old Amy Cahill and her younger brother Dan head into the land down under to discover that what their own mother and father knew about the hunt for the three angry. But following their parents' footsteps bring up lost memories for Amy so awful that she can't share them even with Dan. Haunted by the ghosts of their past, chased by deadly competitors, Dan and Amy can't see who is an enemy and who is a friend. Their blindness leads into a terrible mistake and the death of a hidden ally in, in too deep. <coughs> A venomous truth. Hunt for the 39 clues that led to an automatical power has have taken a heavy toll on 14-year-old Amy Cahill and her young brother Dan. They have just seen a woman die. They're they've they're they're wanted by the Indi Indonesian police. They're trapped on an island with a man who knows too much about the death of their parents. A tropical storm rolling in. Just when they think they can't get any worse, it does. Because the Cat Hills have one more rattling skeleton for Emmy and Dan to discover. <sighs> Travel truth about their family branch. In Book 7, A Viper's Nest. Split in two, one belief has sustained 14-year-old Emmy Cahill and her younger brother Dan. On their hunt for the Theranite clues, <coughs> they are the good guys. But then a shocking discovery about their parents shatters everything. Amy and Dan think they know, dividing the two siblings for the first time ever. Dan, when Dan just disappears in a country more, of more than a billion people, Amy has to make a terrible choice: find the next clue, or find her younger brother. In Book Eight, the first called. One second, I need water.
behind the black, the shadow man in black has followed 14-year-old a Amy Cahill and her younger brother Dan on their worldwide search for 39 queens that led to a great power. Amy and Dan now know the man black has tried to kill them. They know he is a madrigal, a member of the most secretive, terrifying group hunting the thir for the 39 clues. And they know something else, a secret that they would never forget. Their parents were madrigals too. Amy and Dan have run hard and fast, but they can't escape the man following them. And now, in the wait, the terrible tragedy. He's ready to stop, step out of the darkness for the final confrontation in Book six, storm not nine, storm warning. <coughs> the end of the line. Fourteen year old Amy Cahill and her younger brother Dan have had enough. Not only do they ha have to find thirty nine clues first, they're expected to reunite their backstabbing family, the same people who killed their parents. But Amy and Dan haven't survived explosions and assassinations attempts for nothing. They have a plan to finish the clue hunt on their own terms. Too bad there, there's a final, fatal secret the Mad Girls haven't told them. A secret that could cost Amy and Dan and the world everything. <coughs> and Book 10 into the Gauntlet, an amazing end to a series. For Part 1, <coughs> I see Part 1, there's four parts now. At the time, I never knew this. Part 1, The Clue Hunt. And at the end of the thing, the, symbols, the blue symbol has shattered and the seven, uh, five family keys have been shown. A spoken V. At the time, I never knew anything about it. And then, nothing. An amazing series came to an amazing end. I love this series. Up until I found out about book 11, Vesper's Rising, four authors, four stories. 14-year-old Amy Cahill and her younger brother Dan thought they could return to their regular lives when they found the three clues that safeguard their family's great power. They were, they were wrong. Powerful enemies, the Vesper's, have been waiting in the shadows and they'll stop at nothing to grab the clues. Four powerhouse authors unite to expose the 500 year old secret struggle between the Cahills and the Vespers. The Vespers are rising and the world is in jeopardy. <coughs> <coughs> the V Smoking V's returned. Red to black. And then, red, red, and prepare yourself. Cahill versus Vespers. It's coming. It's coming. Out sight. Part two. It's great. Into the time. I follow this. For a while, I was excited. I just never end up getting them at the time. Oh, Sorry, I have an itch. No, I'm just... <laughs> well, into checking out at first, I got into part three when I was checking it out, and by the time I checked it again in like. That's the first one released. 2011. Oh. It was only a year. Two years later, I still never got the looks. Checked out part three of it. I'm like, what? At the time, there was only volume one of book one, and then I followed it until the beginning of 
book three when it was coming out. Easter of last year. Yes. I got book. I got a complete second part for Fair Night Blues. The Hill vs. Rosemary. First three on my for my class to Virginia Beach. Class trip. The like, last three for Easter. I can't stop reading. I love. I read the first three. I just couldn't stop. Kidnapped. Thirteen-year-old Dan Cahill. Uh, at the time, this this two-year there's a two-year gap between part one and part two. So Dan's only eleven. Part one. Thir kidnapped. Thirteen-year-old Dan Cahill and his older sister Amy thought they belonged to the world's most powerful family. They thought the clue hunt for third and clues leading to the source of that power was over. Even they thought they won, but Amy and Dan were wrong. One by one, distress calls started coming in from around the globe. The hills were being kidnapped by a shadowy group, only known only as the Vespers. Vespers. Now Amy and Dan have just days to fulfill a bizarre ransom request. Or their captive friends will start dying. Amy and Dan now don't know what the Vespers want or how to stop them. Only one thing is clear. The Vespers are planning to win. If they get their hands on the clues, the world will be their next hostage. In book one, the Medusa plot. I cannot stop reading that. An impossible ransom. When seven family members of their members of their family were kidnapped by a sinister, sinister organization known as the Vespers, thirteen-year-old Dan Hill and his older sister Amy vowed that they will stop at nothing to bring the hostages home. But then the ransom comes in, and the Vespers demand the impossible. Dan and Amy have just days to track down and steal an ancient map. The only catch, no one has seen it the map for half a century. Amy and Dan are on a desperate search that will lead them to Nazis, spies, and Mad King, and some of history's dirtiest secrets in a race of their lives, and one misstep will mean certain death for hostages. And Book 2, The King's Ransom. <coughs> I'm not one to talk too much. If I do, my throat is extremely dry. <coughs> a life on the line. When seven members of the family... It's the same thing. Even as Dan steals himself to accept these facts, then think will happen. The first person captures a blameless, a blameless bystander, Dan's best friend, Atticus. With the innocent life on the line, Dan kicks off a frantic hunk that will take him from the back alleys of Prague to the rock curves of Turkey. But Dan better fight Atticus fast. If he doesn't, his best friend will surely die. In Book 3, Dead of Night. <coughs> An outrageous crime. Until now, Amy and Dan have stayed... one step ahead of the police and managed to keep their family safe. But well, all that's about to change, Vespers, Vesper 1 commands them to steal a golden jubilee, one of the world's largest diamonds. But Amy and Dan don't know is that the jubilee is a setup and someone is going to die. I can't remember who dies. <coughs> In Book 4, Shatterproof. <coughs> Traitor within. And now, I mean, that now the Vespers have landed their most sinister blow yet. A blow that strikes at the very heart of the Cahill family. Because I mean, this Dan discovered that one of the Vesper moles is in their internal circle. And Amy and Dan need to smoke out the traitor before the next hostage dies. 
they have just days to discover who has their back and who wants to stick a knife into it and trust no one. Started with a kidnapping, a shattery organization only known as the Vespers snatched seven members of the Cahill family and demanded a, ser a series of bizarre ransoms. <laughs> but when they dis delivered the last ransom, Amy and Dan discovered Vespers won a terrifying endgame. The objects he demanded are vital pieces to a Vesper plot that will harm millions of innocent people. Now to defeat, um, now the two siblings and their friends are on an all-out sprint to stop Vesper One before the whole world goes boom in Day of Doom. And into a great second part. <coughs> and again. The symbols destroy lightning, fire, smoke, and part three, which at the time I found out, but if I had been catching up, I would have found that out. And now, part three. Until my voice dies. And that will probably be soon. Good. Game on! The, the Hill family had the script. Or five, for 500 years, they have guarded the 39 clues, 39 ingredients in a serum that transforms whomever takes it into a most powerful person on Earth. If this serum gets into the wrong hands, the disaster will rock the world. So certain Cahills have always made it their mission to keep the serum safe, buried, locked away until now. 13-year-old Dan Cahill and his older sister are the latest guardians of the clues. They think they are done everything right, but a tiny mistake leads to a catastrophe. The serum is missing, and Dan and Amy have to get it back and stop who stole it before it, it's game over for everyone. For part four, um, one, the main antagonist is introduced like halfway through the series. The main antagonist of part two is introduced, I want to say, book, fifth book. He was introduced in this, in the very first book in part three. I don't have book two, one or two so far for part four, that's how. But he's already been mentioned. All he has the outcast. And he's making disasters real. Infamous disasters. I don't know much. A nightmare come true. As a member of the most powerful family in history. <laughs> Dan Cahill has spent, been shot at, captured, and even thrown into a pet of deadly snakes. I think that was book 7 of part 1. He survived all due to his look, smarts, and his older sister, Amy, who has always stick by his side. Now, Dan and Amy are facing their greatest threat yet, and Amy, who has found a way to secure the, to use the source of the Cahill power against them, to stop him. Dan and Amy must set out on a desperate mission that will take them from one of the world's hottest regions all the way to the frozen blast of the Arctic Circle. But with the enemy closing in, Dan finds himself facing one of his greatest ter um, one terror he never imagined, being betrayed by his own sister. This was really interesting how that all happened. The clock. Uh, oh. 
No, nowhere to run and unbreakable. I forgot about naming those. Life or death. The clock runs out for Dan, to, thirteen-year-old Dan Cahill, as he heads to the most powerful, as head of the most powerful family in the world as ever known. He has older sister Amy ha, has been in crosshairs for too long. Dan and Amy always imagined to stay ahead of the, their enemies, but only a matter of time until luck fails. Now Dan is hopelessly trapped, and nothing can survive. Nothing except unleashing an evil into the world, even worse than Amy's closing in. As Dan hovers between life and death, Amy has a terrifying decision to make just how far is she willing to um, go to save her little brother in Countdown. Oh my god! I can't stop reading this series. I have to reread it so much. Final hours. TikTok. 15 year old Dan. Amy has only a few days to live. There's a poison coursing through her, and her only chance is to collect ingredients for an antidote. Too bad the antidote's ingredients are scattered around the world, and too bad the survival for Amy is, is Amy's smallest problem. The antidote sh she needs is just only capable to stop the deadly enemy, J. Ruthord Pierce, main antagonist. I won't tell you anything else besides his name is on the brink of becoming the most powerful man in the world. If, and if he does, no one will be safe. And Amy and her younger brother will do everything it takes to bring Pierce down, even if Amy must <coughs> pay the ultimate price. <sighs> I'll go check up on something. Wow, this is sorry longer than my first take. <coughs> oh. Crest sucked into a vortex and Civils of the animals. The family crests. Rest locked in. Yell, part four. Here's something that I've written Um. Uh, he is over. A lot. I'll keep going till I'm finished, even if this is longer than the others. Okay. Book one, blue crest, blue cover. Red crest, yellow cover. For part two. Green crest, green cover. Well, it's yellow crest, blue cover. Being not in his own. Check. But, ooh! Oh! Oh, close. 
what what they have done with the ones that have the colored crest. The different colors, the first book. The last book will be their color. And so far with Double Cross, which is part four, yellow crest, blue cover, then orange, then green, and then probably yellow, most likely yellow. <clears throat> Follow the leader. Only at 17 years old, Ian Cabra is head of the Hills, the most powerful family in the world. He has presidents on speed dial, generals at his beck and call. Ian knows he is an ideal leader and only man enough for the job. And there's one small problem. He already messed up big time. A Cahill from the past calling himself the outcast has risen to challenge Ian with an impossible test. The outcast has recreated one of the history's greatest disasters and dared Ian to stop him. If Ian and his allies can't decipher the outcast's hints in time, innocent people will die. Ian's only chance to beat the outcast is to track down his former allies, Amy and Dan, but finding Amy and Dan will demand Ian an impossible sacrifice. <coughs> Oh, I'm assuming Titanic, that's what it's called. Freefall. The Cahills are the world's most powerful family, but their strength is being tested. A sinister man calling himself the Outcast has targeted the family and set them on an impossible test. He's recreating four of their history's most uh, world worst disasters and <coughs> challenging the young Cahills to find and stop the tragedies before suing. Now, with one disaster behind them, siblings Dan and Amy Cahill and their friends just have days to finish this, to, to days to discover the outcast's next move will be. Their frantic search will be pointed somewhere towards a terrifying air disaster, an explosion of the Hindenburg aircraft. But no one travels travel no one travel travels by air anymore. No one travels by air. Planes? What do the outcast cryptic message mean? You get young Cahill must split up and to take to the sky to try to find the answer before their whole world comes crashing down. Mission Hindenburg. And the next one comes out in January. Who is the outcast? And why is he threatening the lives of the innocent people? Book 3 reveals a shocking secret that will send Amy and Dan and the world real. Think the outcast can't get any more devious? Think again. His terrifying challenge, <coughs> his next terrifying challenge, will push <coughs> the Kill Hills to the limit. What does he have in store? Find out in Double Cross Book 3, Mission Hurricane. And then Mission Unknown, because that doesn't have a name yet. Mission Unknown is the fourth and last book of Double Cross and will be written by the yeah, other person. Released in the 2016, it o might also be the last in the whole 39 Cruise series. Wow, this is beautiful. Yeah. Four colors. Blue, red, green, and yellow. Four family crests, all the same color. Well, if you count black, but if there is the part four, a part five, that will be it. And then probably that's our. Funny thing is, yellow is a Catherine, and that's what the outcast is. Well, ten, 10 minutes longer than my last one. Ah, uh, I have enough time about this. Read it. If you don't read, read it. If you, I read it, read it again. If you just finished it, read it again.
I just said that twice, basically. So, um, see ya. Bye, goodbye. Read this, because I recommend it.